I'm reading from John 15, verses 1 through 8. I am the true vine, and my Father is the vineyard keeper. He removes any of my branches that don't produce fruit, and he trims any branch that produces fruit so that it will produce even more fruit. You are already trimmed because of the word I have spoken to you. Remain in me, and I will remain in you. A branch can't produce fruit by itself, but must remain in the vine. Likewise, you can't produce fruit unless you remain in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. If you remain in me, and I in you, then you will produce much fruit. Without me, you can't do anything. If you don't remain in me, you will be a, like a branch that is thrown out and dries up. Those branches are gathered up, thrown into a fire, and burned. If you remain in me, and my words remain in you, ask for whatever you want, and it will be done for you. My Father is glorified when you produce much fruit, and in this way, prove that you are my disciples. The word of God for the people of God. How many of you have sent your kids off to college? How many of you remember packing the car full, taking them, helping them load it into their dorm, maybe meeting their roommate, going for lunch before you hit the road? I clearly haven't sent mine off to college, but I remember that experience on the receiving end, right? Except my parents sent me off with my sister instead, but it was all good because we still had the conversation. The conversation where they reminded me of the most important things, the things that after 18 years of raising me and teaching me and helping me and growing me and disciplining me that they really didn't want me to forget. Did you have that conversation? Or at least that urge of all the things that I've taught you, of all the things that you've done in your life, these are the key things to remember. What are they? What's the call home? You know, that was first in the last service, too. That is number one. Check in, please. I want to know you're alive. What else? <laughs> Stay safe. What's that? Eat your, Eat your vegetables. What else? Be kind. Study hard. What else? Don't call if you get in trouble. <laughs> well, <laughs> what's that? Witness. Yeah, share the goodness. Go to church. What else? Make new friends. Make good choices. Be a good person. Don't be a jerk. Remember that we're paying for you to go to these classes. Please go to these classes. Don't party too hard. We know, we know there's going to be some things. Take a buddy, make good choices, right? To be smart about it. Things happen, right? We want to sort of instill all of those last minute core things. The scripture that we heard today comes from Jesus in the upper room with the disciples. It's the night of the Last Supper. It's before the crucifixion. And while the disciples don't yet know what's coming, Jesus does. He knows he's not going to be with them every day like he has been for three years. He's not going to be there to answer all their questions. He's not going to be there to problem solve with them. He's not going to be there to give them guidance and direction and say, yes, this, no, that. And so he gives this sort of last minute pep talk. It's not quite so casual, right? But it's this time of all the things that we've talked about, guys, in the last three years, of all the stories, of all the scriptures, what I want you to know and remember, remember this. And Jesus tells them, I am the vine, you are 
the branches. Abide in me. Remain in me. Stay connected with me. Of all the things, that's one of the most important. Stay connected. Now, Jesus knows what's coming, but the disciples don't. He knows he's not going to be there every day. And I bet he can anticipate that when that dawns on them, they're going to start freaking out. He's not here. Well, what are we supposed to do? Well, what does that scripture mean? Well, what about this? And how, this person wants to be healed. And how are we going to handle that? And that, that when the, these people are hungry. They need food. Do you remember when we needed to do the food? What do we do? Right? What do we do? And Jesus says the answer is obvious and simple. Remain in me. Abide with me. Which cognitively makes sense in just sort of the theoretical. But like, how do we remain with you if we're not with you? I know how to be with y'all, right? I know how to hang out and be present with somebody who's sitting next to me in the pew. I know how to sing together. I know how to pray together. I know how to share a meal together. I know how to serve somebody together. But if you're not actually here, what does it mean to remain with you? What does that translate to? So we have to take it out of the theoretical and put it into the practical. And... I've been dealing with death a lot lately, or the proximity of death a lot lately. I've had a couple of friends tell me that they have terminal diagnoses. I've done a couple of different funerals. I've walked with people in their grieving and in their time beforehand. So death has just sort of been right there. And the story with Jesus' death is right there. And the thing that I keep coming back to is that after someone dies, when they're no longer physically present with us, what do we have? Memories, all that they were, all that they taught us, the times that we shared together. So how do we keep them with us? We remember. We share them with other people. Y'all, if you had met my mother, she passed five and a half years ago. I don't get to share her with you in the ways that I did other churches, but I can tell you about her. Right? I can tell you about my grandparents. I can tell you about friends in the same way that you shall share your people with me. How do we keep them with us? We talk about them. We tell their stories. We talk about their ridiculousness, their quirks, their follies, right? Those one-liners that won't ever let us go. We keep them with us in those ways. And we keep Jesus with us in a similar way. We pull on his stories. We pull on who he was. And because we weren't the ones that were right there with him in that moment, we pull on the stories we've been told, on the faith that's been shared with us, on the witness that's been garnered. I never met my grandparents' parents, but I know them through their stories, right? I never met Jesus in real life to shake his hand and hear his voice, but I've met him through the scriptures. I've met him through your love. I've met him through your witness and the witness of others. How do we stay with him? We keep him alive through the telling, through the experiencing, through the re-experiencing, through the exploring. You know what? I never heard that story. Oh, you've, I've got a good one for you. Have you ever heard this one? I mean, that's part of what we do on Sunday mornings. We tell the stories. Why? Because it helps us to carry Jesus with us. He says, remain in me. Well, how do we do that? But by remembering him, by holding to him and to his teachings. That's a big part of it. And for me, that translates into a lot of different things. And, and my, my thought was this. <laughs> Kim did a really nice job setting up the altar. Geraldine Warner made this quilt to share with us. Um, and then I went and made a mess. And this is my mess because for me, remaining with Jesus, connecting with Jesus is about being with people. It's about hearing your witness, but it's also about spiritual practices, spiritual disciplines, means of grace, all those things are synonyms. Um, and so I have some of the things that have been important for me. This stack here 
And none of these are uh, exhaustive lists, just so you know, you could go look at my bookshelves upstairs to prove it. Um, these are just devotionals. But how do I stay close to Jesus? How do I call upon him? Well, I call upon these stories, these moments. Some of them are scripture. Some of them are personal stories. And there's a whole bunch of them. This one is a whole bunch of homework. It's a Lenten discipline book um, from years ago that I got. And every day has a task. It's like a social experiment over and over again. One Sunday, what they did was um, everybody donated their shoes. Y'all came to church wearing shoes. You leave not wearing shoes because we donate them all. Imagine that. It's not today. It's okay. <laughs> this one is a whole bunch of books that sort of push on different components. Um, what is this Bible by Rob Bell? Is it about scri uh, scriptural um, exploration, deconstruction, new understanding? This kind of like inspired, but... A whole lot more. Um, N.T. Wright, he's a strong biblical author, and Philip Yancey, he's got a lot of sort of um, heady, emotional, lived experience work, spiritual disciplines, messy spirituality. It's about like embracing the mess that we are. Do y'all know you're a mess? you like, no, I put myself together before I came to church this morning. But the truth is we all have mess. And Mike talks about how we offer grace in the midst of our mess and how we offer grace to people in the midst of theirs. It teaches me, it challenges me how to be like Jesus, how to stay with Jesus, how to learn from others in their experience of Jesus. I've got scripture galore, right? And I've got the study Bible, and I've got the one with questions in it. I've got my third grade Bible that I got when I was nine years old in the United Methodist Church. And the post-it notes, I don't know if I've shared this with you before, but when I got to college and they had us reading the Bible in my religion classes, I thought it was still sacrilege to write in my Bible. So I wrote on post-it notes instead because I didn't want to scandalize the Bible. And then I kept with it, and so then that later there's underlines and things. But the post-it notes are a reminder of that progression and that learning and those questions. Staying in the scriptures, getting to know them, talking with each other, asking those questions. I've got a hymnal because singing about the faith is a practice to me, a spiritual discipline where I learn about Jesus. And... Um, if you're old school, I doubt that any of you are, but if you're old school, you'll know that the theology that we proclaim is in these verses. It's not just about what you learn in the scriptures, but actually sort of what we believe, what does that mean? That's all contained here. You knew that, right? I was just messing with you. Um, this is uh, about a prayer practice. So I write the prayer concern in the middle of a circle, and then every time I pray about that thing, I circle it. The, the idea derives from a book by Mark Batterson, who serves in Washington, D.C. So those things that I'm praying for about our church and our community, every time I come back and pray again, I draw another circle. It's a simple thing, but it, it helps me sort of focus. I've got prayer beads, because sometimes when I'm praying for people I want to touch, I want to tactile, I want to think. And sometimes it's helpful for me because I've got like five prayer requests and then I'm done. And then, well, that's a lot left to pray for. And it helps me think of bigger and bigger circles. It's not just the people I know here, but it's the people there. And then the next circle out and the next circle out, the prayer beads sort of draw me into this mindfulness that is beyond myself. I've got my earbuds because sometimes my discipline is listening to music. Sometimes it's listening to a podcast. Sometimes it's listening to a devotional or somebody else's worship service. I've got this candle here, which I keep in my office. Because um, if, if you haven't noticed, I'm somebody who sort of is always going. And so when I come into the office, I light my candle and I pause and I have a prayer list that's up on my whiteboard, and I pray for those people and anyone else that's on my heart. It slows me down, and it reminds me to sort of center myself, ground myself in Christ. These are coloring cards, and they have a scripture and a phrase and then a picture on them. And I take one out, and then I color it. 
And that's my spiritual discipline. It's just a creative outlet, right? It's doing something beautiful, making something pretty. It may not be as nice as how somebody else might do it, but I get to do it my way, right? For me, being with Jesus, growing in the faith, is like this smorgasbord of options. There's so many ways to do it. We don't have to be rigid and hard about it. We can play. We can learn. We can grow. We can try new things. And in that, we learn new ways to hang out with Jesus. Did you know you could spend time with Jesus by coloring? Like, it doesn't have to be hard. It doesn't even have to be good. You can spend time with Jesus walking in the woods. You knew that one. You can spend time with Jesus just sitting with a friend. You can spend time with Jesus cooking a meal. You can spend time with Jesus eating a meal. Like, does it get any better than that? You mean I can have pie and Jesus at the same time and it's like a spiritual discipline? If we're mindful about it, absolutely. If we invite Christ to be a part of it, if we see time together as a spiritual experience, a hundred percent. And can we do something even unwittingly and still find God there? That should be like a big resounding yes. Can we do something even unwittingly and still find God there? Yes! Yes! And we say, praise God, because sometimes I am as clueless as a rock. I just don't even know. And God still shows up. That's really good news. God is with us in these things. And we stay connected by participating together, by being together. Sometimes in formal spaces like a sanctuary for worship, but also in the informal that spans the spectrum. And I want us to remember we are to maintain that connection, right? Jesus says clearly over and over again, you read those eight verses, you will see remain or abide, depending on your translation, at least eight times. He is real clear. You got to stay connected. But staying connected isn't hard It's not onerous. It doesn't have to be a burden. You can do it in any of these kind of ways and hundreds more. And it's worth doing because when we stay connected, then we are fruitful. We get to bear the fruit of the Spirit. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, gentleness, and self-control. Like who doesn't want more of that? That's what we're invited to in this relationship, to stay in Christ, to know that it's as simple as coloring or singing or walking and can be as heady as any book you want to read or scripture you want to study. The options are endless and our God is infinite and ready to meet us wherever and however we choose to abide. Let us pray. God, we give you thanks for the many ways you come to us. We give you thanks that you are so eager to stay in relationship that you provide hundreds of avenues. Help us to explore them. Help us to taste and try to see what works for us in a way that is life-giving and life-sustaining. Help us to know that sometimes we may get pruned back. There are things that don't honor you, things that don't honor our relationship with you, and it's okay if we need to be pruned, for you are a good and trustworthy fine dresser. I'm grateful for this community, for the ways that we can find and experience you each and every week. Through Jesus Christ we pray. Amen.